Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you about how you can use Anaconda and CoCalc with a compute server. And you can also use it in your normal projects, but with a compute server, it's um, especially useful. So let me give you a little demo. Um, first, I'm signed into CoCalc, and now I'll click on Projects. So I get a list of all of my projects, and I'm going to use this demo project which doesn't have any files in it. And I'm going to create a new compute server. And I'll click on Create Compute Server. And we have some templates. I'll just use this uh, basic one right here. And uh, let me call this Demo of Anaconda. And then down here, I'll choose the Python Anaconda image. So this is an image that has Python pre-installed, but it also has CondaForge all set up perfectly, or rather um, MiniForge all set up perfectly with the CondaForge package repo so that you can very easily install pretty much anything from the Python scientific computing infrastructure and also other things like R and Julia um, into your compute server, as it says here. Okay, so um, I'll just leave all the defaults except notice I have DNS enabled um, but otherwise we'll just leave all the defaults and then I'll click start server and now the server is starting up this should take about one to two minutes and once it's started up I'll open a little terminal on the server and start installing things the um, default where the installation pulls packages from is called condaforge and if you look at the description that we just had, which you can pull up again by doing settings, you can see where it says install any package. When you click there, it takes it to you to the CondaForge website. Here you can search thousands and thousands of packages. For example, PyTorch. There it is. Uh, another one is TensorFlow. And of course, one of my favorites is Sage because I started Sage. Um, so you can see here there's a Sage package. A really cool thing about CondaForge and in general Anaconda is it actually makes it really easy to install multiple packages together into the same Python environment. So here if you install the Sage package and then say also PyTorch, you can use those together in the same Python environment um, as a normal Python library. It's really one of the best ways of getting to use Sage not as its own standalone um, distribution with its own little custom language, but instead as just a normal part of the Python ecosystem. Okay, let's see. So our compute server is up and running, and then I'll just make a new terminal and tell the terminal to run on this compute server. And I do that as follows. I click new, and then I'll click on terminal, and then I'll set it to run on here. By the way, if you like using JupyterLab or VS Code, another option is you can simply click on either of these buttons, and you'll be using Jupyter lab or VS Code running directly on this compute server. So anyways, let me start a CoCalc terminal on the compute server. So I'll just call it Anaconda Demo. It's a Linux terminal. And then where it says server, I'll select my compute server, which I call Demo of Anaconda. Okay, let's run the terminal there. And now what happens is the terminal switches, so it's now running on my compute server. You can click, click or type top, and you'll see how much memory you have, your CPUs, and this compute server is completely dedicated to you. Nobody else has any code running on it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, well, let's, let's use Conda. So if I do um, Conda install, let's do something really simple first. Let's say matplotlib, and it will check um, CondaForge for the matplotlib package, figure out what the dependencies are, and then give us a little estimate, and then we hit yes, and we'll be able to install it. So here it goes. Um, so that takes a second. While we're waiting, let me show you again how you can run, uh, say, VS Code directly on this compute server, just while we wait. So. Um, before you could see the link under servers, you can also bring up that same display by just clicking this bar at the top, and then you get a link to VS Code here. 
And then a final way, there's a little dot dot menu here and the same exact dot dot menu in the upper right here. Where you just click and you can choose VS Code if you want it. Or here, VS Code. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. So for example, I can click here, click on VS Code, boom. Uh, and in a few seconds, we'll be up and running with VS Code running directly on the compute server. And it just pops up in another tab right here. And here it is. So that's VS Code running in our compute server for a mere um, three cents per hour. Anyways, I requested to install matplotlib and it's going to do so. So I just say yes, and it grabs all the packages, and now it's installing them. And notice I don't have to worry at all about uh, using sudo, trying to become root, or any of that. Um, Anaconda is set up so that it's a system-wide install on the compute server, but all the files are set up to have the same permission as the normal user. So you don't have to worry about file permissions or anything like that. Okay, so we're, we're now done, we've installed matplotlib in um, Anaconda. And now we could test that by just typing Python. That runs the Python that is part of this Anaconda environment. And then we could do import matplotlib. And there it is. But if we do something else like import sage, that will fail because sage isn't installed. So let's do conda install sage. And this should take a little while because sage is pretty big. Um, so again, it's going to go out and try to find exactly what packages are needed to install Sage. And then once it's figured that out, it'll give us a little prompt and then we'll say, yes, we'd like to install Sage. So the answer is yes. Um, notice there's a little bit of downgrading that has to happen. And then here it's listing all of the packages that are part of Sage. And it looks like it has to download 1.17 gigabytes of data. If you want, we can check to make sure we have the room to download that data. So I'm going to split the terminal. And then in the terminal at the bottom, I'm going to switch it to be running on our Anaconda server. And then I'm going to type df-h slash. And I see that I have only two gigabytes free. And I'd really like to have more space. So before I install Sage, I'll click on this configuration menu, click on settings and then scroll down and see where it says 10 gigabytes. Let's increase the disk space to 20 gigabytes. You just say, yes, I'd like to do that. Um, the disk will enlarge to 20 gigabytes and it does, it's not instantaneous, but within about 30 seconds to one minute, uh, we'll see that it in fact now is 20 gigabytes. Notice by the way, there's no need to reboot anything or restart anything. Okay, so let's install Sage. So again, it's grabbing all of the packages, downloading them, and then extracting them. And once this is done, we'll be able to import Sage and use it like any other Python package. While we're waiting for this, I'm going to make a Jupyter notebook that's running on this compute server. And I'll do that by typing or clicking new, clicking Jupyter notebook, and then I'll switch it so that it runs on the compute server. And there it is. And we have this Python 3 kernel and uh, let's try import uh, PyLab. And by the way, the blue bar across the top that says demo of Anaconda, that tells us that this is running on the compute server and not somewhere else. So we can try a little plot, two, seven. So that's great. Um, we got our plot. And now let's see, has Sage installed yet? Not quite yet, but uh, disk space should be getting chewed up. And notice in fact, the used amount went from 7.6 gigabytes to 15 gigabytes. So it just downloaded and extracted a lot. So because of the compression and so on, it was a lot more than the like two gigabytes or so it said above. Okay, so we're, we're letting it run. Um, I'm kind of getting nervous. What if this isn't enough space? Okay, it's done. So we should now have sage. Let's see if it works. Import sage.all. And there it is. And now I can try something that uses Sage. Let's factor the current year. Yay, so we have the prime factorization of the current year. So this is something that uses Sage to do the computation. Um, okay, 
And if you want to install another thing, like I mentioned, let's install Tensor or uh, PyTorch, for example. So conda install PyTorch, which is not installed yet. And uh, in a moment, just like before, we'll be able to install PyTorch. Um, by the way, there's another, uh, like if you run this Python Anaconda image on a machine with a GPU, it will be fully aware of the GPU and um, PyTorch and so on. We'll be able to use your GPU. And we have really good GPU offerings with compute servers on CoCalc. For example, if you click server, create compute server, um, and then look at one of these templates that involves a GPU. Uh, here's a nice example. So this is an H100, which is the, one of the best GPUs you can currently get. It costs $5.62 per hour. And when you select it, then notice that um, the image by default is Python, Anaconda. And so if you start this up, it doesn't really have a lot pre-installed. So you'll have to do conda install, say, PyTorch, if that's what you want to use, or conda install TensorFlow if you want to use that, etc. And that will all work properly and support your GPU. Okay, so it looks like we've now installed PyTorch, and let's just see that it's there. Okay, torch. Uh, this should say false. So it's there, but I did not start a compute server with... Um, a GPU. Okay, so that illustrates how to use Conda with, um, or how to use the Conda image with a CoCalc compute server. Um, and you can install lots and lots of things. Just search for absolutely anything on Conda Forge, and then you can install it. So, I don't know, Cython. Here's another one of my favorite packages. So if you search for Cython, um, there it is. And then you just you know, use the names you do. You can also install from within a notebook by putting an exclamation point in front. Conda install Cython. I think you maybe have to do dash Y so that it doesn't try to interactively ask you whether or not you want to install it. But let's just try this. Uh, oh, one other hint. If you try to import something and it's not installed, you may have to restart the kernel twice uh, in CoCalc in order to get the um, thing to be recognized. And that's because we have a, uh, there's an extra kernel that's um, cached so that whenever you restart, it's very fast. So um, just note that. Okay, so now Cython is available. And by the way, this whole environment I'm working with, all this stuff installed, you can also use it from this VS Code instance that we started. Like if I go file um, or terminal, new terminal, then that Python instance also has access to the whole Conda uh, infrastructure that we were just playing with. As you can see, and um, you can also use Jupyter Notebooks from within VS Code. And then finally, you can also easily just start up Jupyter Lab, just like that. It'll pop up in another tab, and you can use that as well, along with your Conda environment. So, um, oh, and it takes a second to load. This domain name is also easily configurable. But here, here we are, and you can make a Jupyter Notebook. And there's also a Sage kernel because we installed Sage. So that's nice. Um, I notice like Sage starts up very quickly. It's all very snappy. And this is a, you know, a great environment, one of these compute servers, if you want to run calculations that are very um, computationally intensive. I mean, as you can see, uh, the sort of compute servers you can make are potentially very, very powerful. Like if I go right here, and then um, I want something with you know, like 80 CPUs. Look, there's lots of machines with 80 CPUs and they're extremely affordable. Okay, um, so that concludes this like brief tour of using the conda command in a terminal to install whatever packages you want into a compute server 
that has the Python Anaconda image. And just because I, I mentioned Python primarily, uh, don't forget you can also install Julia and R itself using Anaconda if you need to. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.